Um, ladies and gentlemen, let me, let's give it up for Michael Despot, Despotovich, who is going to talk a little bit about data storytelling and Google Data Studio. Um, he comes to us with a whole bunch of interesting experience. He's a co-director of Apples and Oranges Analytics. Um, and he also has a master's in publishing from SFU and is involved with arts and culture organizations and cooperatives. So if you really want to nerd out about cooperatives, he's your guy. And with that, let me get out of your way. Thanks, Eli. I appreciate it. Um, like many of you, I, I too am on the unceded and ancestral territories of the uh, Squamish and Musqueam and the Tsleil-Waututh. And uh, I can think of a few uh, folks from those identities and beyond um, who work in this space. So I'll just give them the quick shout out. There's the First Nations Technology Council in BC. Um, they have a great training program. I'm looking forward to hiring somebody out of there in some distant future. So that might be a good place to look for future employer ease. And there's an agency out of Victoria called Anamaki. And I'll try to post that later in the chat. They also, they're, I think, completely indigenous owned and on the Songhees uh, Innovation Center. So maybe, uh, maybe those folks can help you in the future. Thanks. So um, I'm going to start sharing my screen here. Uh, I've planned about 30 minutes of, of data, if you will. Um, and you're going to have to trust me on the format, because I'm going to jump right into the data. And then once our eyes have kind of warmed up to this screen, I'm going to um, backpedal a little bit and show you about where the data sources and stuff come from. Um, so here we go with Data Studio Workshop. Uh, this is your view mode. Datastudio.google.com is where you can find your Data Studio. It operates like Google Docs. Um, once you hit your edit button, you can basically uh, see how everything now is its own element. Uh, so with text, uh, that's very formatable and adjustable. Um, with shapes, you know, you can also do a lot there, and so on and so forth. Uh, but the number one thing to know with data is that uh, uh, you have uh, you have to contextualize it. You have to make sure that it, people know where the data source is coming from and in what time period does this data become relevant in. So that's why I always leave a little date marker at the top left here, um, just to let everybody know what you know what time frame are we looking at this date. Um, so. We're going to go over some of these widgets, and then you're going to see how this is going to basically kind of uh, grow and, and, and demonstrate more and more insights. Right? When we use data, we want to demonstrate insights, because people don't always really care about the exact number of people who come to the website or you know, um, purchase something or how much time they spent. They want to know what that means. But first, we have to get the data out here. So I use a lot of scorecards. And I barely ever use gray or black or white. I like to use something orange or green or something colorful. Um, scorecards here basically show you one data point, one metric. Um, right now, for most of what you're going to see, I'm going to be pulling in Google Analytics data. But again, we'll come back to the data sources and how they plug in here. So with Google Analytics data, that shows you pretty much the you know, basics of what's going on on your website. And uh, that includes users. So here we have our scorecard with users. And you'll see this little percentage that's right below it. That's showing you comparison data. You can see here that um, I've automated the default data range so that the users are particular to March 1st to 31st. But then there's this little area here on the right side that says comparison date range. And that's where you go to basically pick Hey, do I want to compare this data to the most to the uh, previous period, to last year, to some custom time, all these kind of things? Um, I imagine word and detail on here, so um, just kind of take it in while, while we go, and then this will be something that'll just warm you up for your own practical knowledge once you jump in yourself. But uh, to rewind, here we have our users, and here we have. Uh, that they have grown 26% from the last period, which would be the previous 31 days before March. Prior to March is February with only 28 days, so that means it takes a little bit of January as well. 
so these are scorecards, and they can show you pretty much anything you want uh, just to kind of get across really quick. When we go down here, you can see that there are uh, time series charts. Some are hard, some are smooth. Um, you'll see right now that every time kind of I'm clicking these uh, on the left side here is where all the data and, and that kind of stuff comes in. But then on the this little tab here that says style, that affords you the option to basically change the colors, you know, add a bunch of things. And you're going to see me play with this to basically make the insights a little bit more clear, a little bit more obvious um, moving forward. You'll also see at the top here that there's uh, basically what kind of, uh, I call them widgets. What kind of widget is this? What kind of chart is it? And if you click that, you can basically uh, change this chart into another one with just one click. Uh, you know, not all charts uh, translate very easily, of course. Like a donut chart to a, a scorecard is maybe going to leave out some data, but this is just a really quick way to go through that. Um, so here we have our scorecards. Here we have our time series charts. Here we have our bar charts. Um, yeah, I'm just waiting for this to kind of load. Sorry, with screen share, things can always take a little bit longer. There we go. Um, I'm not going to explain all the nuances of you know, data itself. That's something that the Google Academy can help you with. If you take the Google Analytics beginner course or anything else, you'll understand a little bit about what dimensions are and what metrics are and other data courses like that. But um, Google Analytics has, I mean, pardon me, Google Data Studio has allowed you to see your dimensions in green, your metrics in blue. So here we're just looking at the user type. And, so, and then we're looking at the metric as the users. Here's it sorted date, a little bit of filters and segments if I need them, and that's it. I'm going to switch to the view mode so I can show you something. All of these are interactive. So when I mouse over with my mouse, you'll see, there we go, you'll see this little point emerge in this area of the time chart. And well, you'll see this. In, there you go. Uh, on March 17th, it'll tell me exactly the amount of uh, impressions that were on that time and how it's comparing itself to uh, February 14th. Uh, so the darker color is the primary metric, and the lighter color is the comparison metric. So impressions now or in this March time versus impressions prior. Uh, so you can see you can use bar charts that are stacked. So you can get to throw in a lot of data in just the exact amount of space that you could do with a simple bar chart. And then below here, we have tables with heat maps. What a heat map basically is is just a little bit of color coding to uh, give the bigger numbers or the bigger kind of metrics um, uh, a little bit more attention. And then the smaller ones get a little bit of a lighter color. So that's what a heat map does. Uh, and you'll see those come up real soon. And then we have a table with bars. We got a pie chart. And then my favorite, the donut chart, because it's got a hole in the middle. So you can throw in some extra information in that empty space. So here's your crash, crash course on all things uh, uh, charts. I call them widgets, but little charts that uh, have to do with Data Studio. I'm going to move on to the next page, where we're going to basically see a little bit about how I use these charts to, to pull insights out. So um, here we have uh, text and then a bunch of scorecards. And you can see I've taken out the metric of the scorecard because I'm kind of telling a story here. I'm, I have two sentences, and then I'm kind of filling in the blanks, kind of like, uh, oh, geez, now the words escape me. What's that thing where you <laughs> are trying to like fill, a, uh, fill in a song, and then you have to like put, oh, man, it's going to kill me. But by all means, um, here's our scorecard in the style area. There's a little checkbox that says hide metric name. So I've gone ahead and checked off that. And now it's a little bit easier to understand. Your website has welcomed 4,796 users who went to your website 5,993 times. They spent about a minute 16 per trip and visited 1.84 pages per session, which is a trip to your site. So use, I would encourage you to use Data Studio in a way that isn't maybe super Data E, I would encourage you to mix and match um, you know, your words, your text, and uh, the um, Data Studio scorecards and other information. 
However, that's not always the best way. So I've given you some more options here. I've given you a funnel version. Here's a funnel representation of your user activity. So on one side is text. On the next side is a scorecard. These are the amount of page views that were on the website. And then here, this is actually a bullet chart that's kind of been hacked a little bit. The cool thing about Google Data Studio is that there are a lot of hacks. You can Google Google Data Studio tips, tricks, fun ways to visualize things. I basically followed a guide, and I found basically a cool way to get this bar uh, to uh, turn into a funnel. Um, as a reminder, I will be happy to share these uh, with you so that you'll see when you input your own data, it'll all more or less automatically flow. But here we have a funnel representation of your user activity where the dark uh, bar that's in front, that one is showing us our current uh, data. And then the lighter bar that's kind of sneaking out in the background, that one is showing us last month's data or the last 31 days of data. And as you can see, we've had more users. So therefore, the bar has progressed a little bit. Uh, and that kind of demonstrates, oh, we have increased. And there's a visual representation for that. Um, this, this range limits is where you go to basically change the size of this. Um, don't worry about that. This is just kind of a quick way to understand your funnel. And then some of you might have your Google Analytics set up with goals. So you can basically put at the bottom of your funnel a goal, like 105 people clicked this very important link on my website, and that was a goal. When it comes to goals, you can also have conversion rates and so on and so forth. So here we have a little bit of a mini story, two sentences. Below, we have a visual funnel. That's a quick way to kind of understand uh, how to use scorecards and how to use bullet charts to uh, relay information very quickly. I'm going to go to the next page. Now we're getting into combo charts. We got line charts and bar charts. So I'm just going to go into the view mode here. As you can see here, we have uh, the line telling us how many users came to the website day after day in March. That's the red line for March, and the pink or the lighter red line for February. And then in the same time, I want to know how many page views did they see uh, on those days. And so that's where I have these, um, these black uh, bars, and then the gray bars, again, from the previous 31 days. So again, not too hard. You just pick your dimension. In this case, I want the date. The date runs along the bottom. Pick my metrics. I got a user. Uh, I, well, I got all my users and then all the unique page views. And that's about it. Once I go into the style, you'll see that there's a lot of ways to style this data. So series number one, that's just a way of telling you, hey, what's that first metric you got? Oh, yeah, it's users. OK, I want it as a line. If I change my mind and want it as a bar, this thing will just change automatically. There we go. But that doesn't look too good. So I'm going to put it back to line. There's a bunch of options to show cumulative information, points, data labels, axes, things like that. And here you have my second metric, series number two. Those are the bars. Same information. So in this bar chart, I've basically shown people just day after day after day of data. But what if I'm really eager to, I don't know, demonstrate month over month growth? Well, that's where this next uh, chart might be really useful. I've made this one cumulative. I've made this one basically start from zero, uh, basically at the beginning of March. And then uh, day after day, the, the numbers accumulate, and they get higher. And now I can kind of show people, look, this is how many more users we got this month. And uh, compared to last month, and this is how many page views they did compared to last month. And that is as simple as a checkbox under style that says cumulative, cumulative. Lastly, for bar charts, um, I just decided to throw in some of the labels here. I thought to show you what happens if you wanted to see the numbers instead of having to mouse over them. Uh, it's not foolproof, as you can see here on like March 18th. The 500 and something nine unique page views are being hidden, and there's no way for me to help that. But by all means, um, you can also demonstrate both the visual aspect and the actual numbers themselves. All you got to do is click 
uh, show points to show the uh, little dots and show data labels to show uh, the numbers. So if I take the data labels off, then the information will go away. And if I don't want these points, if they're not really ha uh, working for me, I'll just take them off. And there we go. But lastly, what I've done is I've put this yellow orangey benchmark bar, if you will. It's called a, oh, sorry, it's called a, a reference line. So if I scroll down, you can put reference lines on bar charts that basically show you, you can set the value, so it's a constant value of let's say 400, whatever that means to you, 400 users, 400 page views, whatever. Um, uh, put it to the right axis and then label it. So target for March was 400 users, uh, 400 unique page views, let's just say. Um, here we have the line basically showing me on March 10th and March 18th, and March 24th, I have hit my target. So I'm successful. You can also use this as kind of, a, well, a more dynamic way. So if I click metric instead of constant value, then I can basically make the bar follow a metric like users and calculate it on something like an average or a median or something like that. And with that, I can write average, oops, users. And again, I can demonstrate that the average is basically just under 200 users per day. So a lot of nuance, a lot of detail in how to make your bar charts sync. OK, lastly, in terms of all of the kind of cool things you can put, I'm going to be showing you um, uh, tables, straight up spreadsheet tables. Sometimes that's the easiest way to relay information, and you don't need to overcomplicate things. Um, I've added a white box on top of some of this data just to keep the anonymity of the client's data I'm using. So don't be alarmed. That's just a white box that I can delete anytime I want. Um, but here we have the page title for the website. We have the unique page views and the page views itself. Now, I've gone ahead and in the edit function, I've sorted this table by the descending value of unique page views. However, when I'm in view mode, I can change that without changing the original documents. So let's say I want to actually do ascending. Then I will click basically this uh, header for the table, and it'll swap the other way. That doesn't change the original document. It just changed this one that I'm viewing. So hopefully, this is the first of many signs that you'll pick up on that Data Studio is very, very, very interactive, and that your job in demonstrating the data is really to create as much agency and as much play and as much fun as possible so people can actually help themselves understand the data. So here we have page title, unique page views, page views. What's really interesting about data is that you can also, like Eli was referencing earlier, um, filter it or change the viewpoint or try to kind of look at a small piece of it. So for those of you who know Google Analytics, you'll know that there are four channels that most people come to a website on, either organically searching through a Google or Bing, uh, directly usually typing in the uh, website or something else, uh, referral traffic like from publicity or from really any other website, and social media traffic. Uh, if I want, I can basically uncheck some of these. I just want to see what organic search and referral look like. And you'll see my entire spreadsheet or my entire Data Studio uh, page here adjust to reflect just these two sources of data. Or you can see that the word only sometimes show up. So if I click that, then it'll just basically solo click this guy. And so on and so forth. And if I just want to check them all, it'll look like that. Again, this is something you do in the view mode because you're basically trying to view and, and play with the data. So OK, I only want to see the data that comes in through Google Organic. I click only. And then there you go. Uh, now I'm only seeing data that's come in through that way. Uh, so I'm just going to let that go back. So I'm going to jump into the edit mode to demonstrate a little bit of what's going on here. 
And just for those who didn't hear, I'm not I'm not keeping my eye on the chat box, but I do intend to answer any questions that show up. I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you, so uh, I promise to come back. In the meantime, here we have our table. Let's take a quick look inside. So again, dimension here was the page title. And then from the page title, title I want to know about the unique page views and the page views. As you can see, I've sorted them by unique page views descending. I can change that in the original document if you want. Um, and to understand these, these are called controls. So if you look up at kind of the top of my screen, there's a button here that says add a control. You can add a drop down list, a fixed size list, input box, advanced filter, slider, and a tick box. This is a drop down. So it's basically showing me whatever the uh, control field I want, which is usually a dimension. And then it'll also show me a little bit more information about which metric kind of applies to or if I'm previewing that information with. So I love using drop downs because they just make it a little bit easier for you to kind of toggle between segments of your audience or certain uh, understandings of, of things like that. Um, but sometimes you need uh, checkboxes. So that's where this uh, control comes in. It's a fixed size list. Uh, that has countries for dimensions and page views. And again, people can um, check things off or click only. So let's say I only want to look at the Canadian users coming through the site. And so now this will get all changed to only show me the Canadian users. However, out of all these options, I actually like this one the most. This is an advanced filter. It allows you to kind of run basically kind of regex style uh, queries just to kind of understand a little bit more. So let's say I'm looking for a very specific page title. Uh, I'm looking for something that is in volume 93. I type it in, I hit Enter. I know there's no button. It's not my doing, I promise. But I hit Enter, and now this will all uh, adjust to show me just the pages that have to do with volume 93. Uh, and also only those in Canada. Let me see. I can, you can compound your your uh, kind of restrictions here. So okay, now I've put all the countries in. Now the information gets a little bit bigger to show me volume three. So if I delete this and hit enter again, it'll all um, go back. Another failsafe is just to simply hit the refresh button, and it'll all reset back to normal. So this page shows you drop down. Um, controls, here's your title, uh, sorry, pardon me, here's your table, here's your uh, advanced filter, uh, and then here's your uh, fixed size list. OK, let's put it all together. So I've been so showing you. No, go ahead. Just, yes. uh, I've got a yeah. question coming in, Michael. Is this an OK time? Yes, yes, please. So Carolyn, I've just given you mic power if you want to come on mic and ask. Otherwise, I can ask for you. Oh, goodness. Hello. Um, ah, I didn't expect to have to talk. <laughs> so um, this looks really, really great. Um, but my question was, we are taking like data and analyzing data from like analytics, from Google Ads. We're looking at social insights. And then we also get like lead data from our CRM. Mm. So are you able to pull, like, do you need like an API or something to pull it into Data Studio? Or for something like that, where you're pulling from multiple sources, do you have to look at a, like a Power BI style mm. product? And I'm saying that because that's the only one that I've heard of before. There may be something else that's better or easier to use. Yeah, great question. I can, I can, I can answer that. And then that'll actually lead me perfectly into how the data sources work with Data Studio. So um, Data Studio is definitely really good at showing you kind of siloed data, like just your Google Analytics and then just your Twitter and things like that. However, in a couple minutes, I will be showing you how to blend data sources, so how to take the advertising spend from one uh, channel, like Google Ads, and then blend it with the advertising spend on Facebook, for instance. So you can blend the sources together. But you know, to truly answer your question, well, how do I get the data sources in here? That's where you can see that these buttons get really relevant. So we've already talked about adding a chart. We've talked about adding control. Now you just got to add data. 
Um, this same button for add data shows up in resource where you get to manage added data sources and you'll see some more information that we might get to today. So when you manage added data sources, uh, these are some of the data sources I have. So I'm gonna click add a data source. And then here we have two options. You can either connect to something external or uh, after you connect to it, you can um, basically make it and kind of like permanently available in your data studio. And so that's where I have a bunch of my clients here with their data. Um, but to start off, you need to connect to something. So it'll show you first the Google connectors, which are Google Analytics, Google Ads, Google Sheets. However, you can see that there's a file upload option. So if you have like a CSV file, you can upload that. If you have some of the more, yeah, like complicated database stuff like BigQuery or, or this, you can do that, MySQL, um, Search Console, and so forth. However, after you get through the, the, the Google stuff, that's when you see the 384 partner connections that can connect you to the sources that you want. So I don't think I heard you mention a specific one, but you can always search for it in the search bar, or you can scroll for it, or you can Google to see if there's a partner connector. Naturally, when it comes to partner connectors, the vast majority of them do come with some sort of payment, some sort of fee, some sort of license that you have to purchase in order to use that. And I'm a fan of using Supermetrics. I use one of the more expensive uh, licenses for Supermetrics so that I can pull in information from all of these marketing channels. But again, if you have uh, something that's a little bit more custom, it is possible. It is, you do need someone to help you out. Otherwise, um, the rest of these are basically APIs. They are just branded APIs. That's all they are. Thanks so much. I didn't realize that, that Data Studio could do that. That's really helpful to know. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And the fun thing about Data Studio is that whatever I say today, you're, you're probably going to get even better results next week and the week after. Data Studio is growing at a crazy rate. Like There are new features almost every week and new partner connections and so on and so forth. So. Well, thank you, Carolyn, because this let me then basically explain to you how, yeah, if you wanted to click Google Analytics to get your Google Analytics in here, you would go into your, you would authorize it. I'm already authorized. And you would pick whichever account you want and whichever property you want, and then whichever view, and you would just hit Add. Uh, so fortunately, all the Google connect together quite well. And then the partner ones, you kind of, there's a small learning curve depending on who you go with, which is why I've gone with Supermetrics because the learning curve is the same for each and every single one of these kind of plugins. Good, so we've talked about um, basically the visualization points, all these charts. We've talked about the way to control them and let people kind of go in and out and how to add that data in there. The one thing I haven't covered is like, why does this look like an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper? Because I decided it should look like that. So if you look under theme and layout, which just kind of shows up whenever you're not clicking anything special, uh, you can go to layout and you'll see that there's uh, an option here to basically make your canvas whatever you want. I know a lot of people who basically do this instead of Google Slides, because of course you can pull data in, you can put images in, it's basically like, just make it, I don't know, 900 by 600, and then it kind of looks like a Google slide deck. Um, I've gone for letters, because of course people understand kind of eight and a half by 11 paper, um, but you'll see me also kind of adjust that in the future. Also, when you're um, right-clicking kind of an empty space, you can see information about the report settings. So you can make your entire report have one single data source, and then it's really easy for um, this connector to know which, uh, sorry, this widget, this uh, table to know where which data source to pull from. Um, you can put uh, a date range dimension on it. You can put some other stuff. You can even actually add Google Analytics here if you want to know if other people are looking at it. And then um, what I like to do is I, I, I make things really easy on my clients. I basically say, hey, this page is just Google Analytics. And so when I click current page settings, I put in the data source for Google Analytics. And then I make sure that the default data range is whatever is in the corner. That's it. So I want to show you what happens when we put this all together. And by all together, I mean nobody wants to see six bar charts in a row, six donut charts in a row. That's a little bit 
it's a little bit of a visual overload. So I mix things up. So here's my story, right? Your website has garnered this many users who went to your website this many times. Here's my bar chart. Here's my line chart. A lot of information there with that information. So this a little more presentable, you know, getting people to, you know, whatever they want. Um, you can also not use uh, a lot of this. Uh, part of the bullet points for what I mentioned today, like accessibility, trying to get people who don't really have training or kind of understand data, you know, immediately understand. Um, I did a data report once for youth, like for 12 to 18 year olds for, for, a, for a nonprofit. And this was kind of just what I did. I, I color coded everything. So here we had the gray text. And then here, this kind of naturally shows up blue stuff. And then here's the green text that applies to the green. So you don't need to be an amazing designer. You can just color code things. You can just kind of feel like very straightforward in terms of what's going on. And that can be enough. Like you don't have to go too hard. And you don't, there's no limit to how many pages you can use, how many charts you can use. So go wild. I'm going to jump back here. Um, I also like to sometimes um, make pages about even, uh, well, sorry, let me back up. Um, when we are using our data controls, uh, that can be really great to let the person see what's going on. But sometimes you can also make that work in the back end, so to speak, in the current page here. Um, I have put in uh, filters. And the filter is basically only show me data related to the book reviews. And so I know this based on the URL structure. I know that when it says domain.com slash book reviews slash how to kill a mockingbird, then anything that has um, the book reviews in the URL, I only want that information in here. Maybe that'll, like if your website has, well, if the word blog is in the URL or something like that. And so filters are really easy to make. You just basically have to understand a little bit of conditions like include or exclude your dimension or metric or dimension, and then starts with whatever the uh, URL is. Or I can put contains or something like that. Hey, Michael, actually, I've got a question right about filters here coming Perfect. in from Jay. Um, Jay, are you able to come on mic? If not, I can read that out. So, so Jay's question is, when pulling in Google Analytics data, are we able to put a filter on for an entire dashboard? That is to say, like, you don't want to like filter in just one of like the bar charts, but actually like everything on the page. Yeah, perfect. So this is how you do it on the page. You just put in the filter here. And if you wanted it for the entire report, then under the report settings, uh, you would also be able to put uh, filters there. Uh, well, once I put in the data source, oh, okay, there's the filter. So I can add a filter there if I want. Cool, that's great, thank you. Um, and I have another question coming in from Christina Wong, who could also go on mic if so curious wants to do, if you wanna do so. Go for it, you had some questions about templates, I believe. Yeah, um, I'm just wondering if, um, well, you already mentioned it earlier um, that you're gonna share the link to mm -hmm. examples that you're doing, which is awesome. Um, but I'm kind of curious, this is, I feel like it's really new, I guess, or maybe I'm just in MIA. <laughs> 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 um, but I, you know, I've looked into like no code, low code stuff, and this feels so like similar to this kind of like things. So I'm just curious, like, what are some common, like favorite uses that you have with data studio? Cause I feel like it's very approachable, um, and user friendly. So thanks. Yeah, no, great question. Um, yeah, Data Studio, um, I, I haven't even shown you stuff related to like building a map. Like you can build a map and have, you know, geographical information on the map, things like that. So um, there's a lot of, uh, I'm just taking you to datastudio.com right now to show you how there's a bunch of templates in here and how in template gallery, there's even more. And if you click see more, it keeps going. And just like everything Google, there is, um, like a community visualization. So you can download other people's templates uh, for free, I'm assuming. Uh, they've posted it up on the, the template. I've never had to go in that far, but this is great if you want just your YouTube or just your merchandise store or whatever, and there's more in here. 
Um, so you can see already that some people are visualizing data related to like location and things like that. But I thought I would do kind of a fun example with you. So this is a good time for me to swap to this. I've made here the smallest Google Data Studio file ever. It's literally, where's my layout here? It is 300 by 200 pixels wide. It contains one scorecard. I've pretended that the data here is talking about current donors and there being 9,514. 9, Let's say it's pulling that from some database of yours or some CRM or whatever. And then I went ahead and I basically made this pretend save the hamsters campaign because the hamsters are endangered where the hamsters need your help. And as you can see, you need to donate to help save the hamsters. And you know, you need a, we need about 10,000 donors. Right now we only have 9,514. What this is, is a data studio report that got pulled in here with a simple embed. So I'm just gonna let it load up so you can kind of see that it's not part of the landing page. It's just part of this embedded code. OK, it's not really coming fast enough here. But when I go to, um, where is it here? Right here, under Share, you hit Embed Report. There you go, embed the code, put all that code somewhere. And then I was using Unbounce, and I basically pasted the code. If you use anything else that lets you just paste some random code, now I've taken this tiny 300 by 300, 300 by 200 iframe and put it in right here. So there's a way for you to be kind of data transparent with what's going on and help people understand you know, how close you are to a goal or what's going on. Uh, that's a, a really creative and fun use of this. But yeah, most people just use it for audits, dashboards, and reports, boring stuff. <laughs> Shall I continue? Thank you. You got it. Well, it's good, because I'm able to fold in some of the stuff I want to get in, so I can still finish up in about five minutes and leave even more time here. Um, uh, some of you know with Google Analytics, you can use goals. And so this is something to let you kind of show like goals, like the link they clicked, the, the, how do they do the thing, all this kind of stuff. And you may be asking yourself, you know, that's an interesting name for a dimension and a metric. Well, that's because Google Data Studio allows you to rename any data metric or dimension you want without like repercussion. <laughs> so when I click into this, um, you can see that here is the green for the dimension. And that when I mouse over the kind of left side, there's this little pencil. When I click it, it, it tells me that the source field is from Google Analytics, an event field, and I've renamed it link they clicked on to do the thing. Uh, same thing with metric, right? So these are actually total events that happened in Google Analytics, and I've renamed it does the thing. So let me just add one more here. Uh, come on. Of course, I have to. OK. Oh, now I've gone into territory. OK, page views, come on. Page. Let's just do revenue. So I'll pull in the revenue here. Actually, I don't think this data source has any revenue, but that's OK. This is about to update with all of the information about the revenue. And then when I hit the Edit button, I basically get to rename it whatever I want. So it can be like, this is how much money we collected in March, or whatever you want the metric to say. This is really helpful when it comes to like Google Analytics has this term sessions, which is a trip to the website. Instead of saying sessions, you can just rename it trip to the website. OK, I'm going to proceed with the last couple bits here. Um, this information, you can also pull in stuff from uh, your audience. So here we got our donut charts, um, heat maps. We're all kind of familiar with that. I've got some of this here, so I'm going to keep going. Um, good. Here's uh, information from Facebook. It's a Facebook page. This is coming in through my Supermetrics license. Um, so here we have uh, information about the followers and the new likes and things like that. Uh, we have information about every single post that was made and a link to the post and a, 
the post description. And if you mouse over it, you can see the actual thing will show up in case you need to truncate things and more information there. You can see I put a little disclaimer. Sometimes it's really important to pick the month and so forth. This last page has a little bit about Twitter. I was basically demonstrating how each time this uh, organization tweeted, they got a little bit more impressions and more engagements. And this is kind of accumulating. I'm trying to show them the effort of their, their work and how important it is to keep tweeting every day as opposed to whenever they feel like it. Uh, you'll also some see I sometimes um, make uh, scorecards gray. And that's because once in a while, the data points will not be dynamic. They will not be information that you can control with time or something like that. Uh, sometimes the metrics will just have to be right now. Whatever today, right now's data is. I can't look in the past, no historical data. And so I tell people, hey, when the scorecards are gray, it's always going to show you today's data. So there are a few limitations, but not from Data Studio. It's coming from the actual API itself. Um, lastly, I'm going to really jam this in here. The, um, you're allowed to use uh, Data Studio to blend data. So as you can see here, I have Facebook ad amount spend, Pinterest ad amount spend, and then I've blended it. I've put those two numbers together. You may be asking yourself, how did he do that? So um, under resource, manage blended data. This is gonna this is gonna look a little intimidating, but I promise you, there's not much here. There's basically two data sources, and I've picked them. I've picked the Facebook ads one and the Facebook sorry FabCycle pin ads. And what I've done is I've put a bunch of metrics from the Facebook one, and I've put a bunch of metrics from the pin one. And now they both show up in the same data source. Once I've done that, I'm sorry, this does get a little bit advanced, but once I've done that, I change the scorecard to be the data source specific to my ads that are combined. And then I make a custom field. So here, let me get out of here. When you choose your metrics, there's always this button at the bottom that says create a field. When you click it, it basically takes you to something that looks like this. And I said, add spend oops, combined. And then what I've done is I've just basically done what you do in Excel, right? When you make a, a, a expression come together, amount spend Facebook plus amount spend Pinterest, the sum of that, the currency is Canadian, hit apply. And next thing you know, I have a metric that is technically two metrics added together. I could have also done some and then the brackets, but either or works here. So that's a really cool way to basically blend your data, bring things together, uh, and then like be able to demonstrate to people, well, instead of just calculating this in your head, I can do it for you, make it really easy to understand exactly how much data was, uh, was spent. Um, since I'm running out of time, I just want you to know that there's a bunch of stuff that you can do here. You can do MailChimp data about emails, opens, clicks, orders. Uh, you can do Klaviyo data. You can do ads data. Um, at my agency, we kind of do all this work. So that's why we end up reporting about it. We do ads, we do email, we do social. So um, here's a nice way to understand ads where you have kind of impressions, clicks, ads to cart, total orders, and then even some more information here so you can understand which of your ads are doing uh, the most for you without having to go into business manager, which can be a little intimidating. So lots to do. Um, I've shown you all of my uh, reports and all my demo stuff. So I'm going to leave it here and start going towards questions. Awesome. Thank you so much. There's so much here. And as a reminder, because things moved quickly, We'll have the video available afterwards, so you can always like pause, slow down, and say like, where did he go next? So you can sort of follow things through. Um, but I've actually got a question here coming in from uh, one of our members, who is just finding sort of the, you know, the initial landing on the site a little bit confusing. And I'm wondering if you were able to just like slowly walk through that initial building out. So, mm. you know, what Laurie is saying is, I find the data available field super confusing to just to set up and understand it. 
And, you know, it's just kind of stuck at page one. So if you could just like walk through, like, what are we looking at here? What, what's happening as I drag this through? Like, what are you actually, what, what are you working and manipulating? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm also going to defer a little bit of that experience to how Data Studio allows you to um, you do this thing. Oh, no, where'd it go? Uh, I guess I already used it. Um, there is there is a template. I can share it with you once I locate it. But basically, and just um, to be clear, it's the filters on the right column that seems yeah. to be the, the 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 sticking point. Okay. Well, uh, anyway, oh, the tutorial report is right in front of me. So this tutorial report is really good. I would encourage everyone to click here first and let Google kind of walk you through what's going on. So this is my answer to that question. But once we get into the data and you hit the edit button. Um, basically, yes, it is very intimidating. Let's say I click on the scorecard um, to see that this kind of mini screen has given me so many options along the right side. Again, the green being dimensions, the blue being metric. Dimensions is kind of like, uh, well, actually, this doesn't apply to Twitter for some reason. But um, so whatever I like from here, like if I like the how many replies I want, how many retweets I want. I can either grab it and drag it and replace it. Um, and then if there's room below, like with a table or something, then you drag it a little bit below. And now you can see this has changed from retweets to replies. But then also don't forget here, the data source is our default data source, which is set in the report settings. The report settings being when I right click some blank space and I hit report settings, and I say, OK, well, the report setting, well, actually, technically, this one is from current page settings. Uh, and the current page settings involve the, the data here. So resource, manage add a data sources, add a data source, go through those steps. Use these buttons here, like add a chart, maybe a scorecard. And then that scorecard will default to something, and it's up to you to edit it and format it. I do a lot of copying and pasting so that I don't have to format each thing. I'll just click this, and I'll right click it, and I'll copy it, and then, or I can use my keyboard. Come on. There you go. Paste it. And then swap out the metric. Make sure the data source is good, the date range is good. Bada bing, bada boom, hopefully. Cool, yes. Yeah. So you're dragging basically from those green available fields, and you drag that over the sort of the blue metric area, and then basically it swaps out depending on what you're looking at, or in other kinds of charts that would have like multiple uh, like data fields there. Yeah, yeah, there's even more ways to do it. So you can um, just actually click the blue button. And then you can base or the, the blue metric or blue or green dimension, and you can uh, search for it uh, or start typing it in. So I've just clicked this, and now it's giving me a bunch of things. But I know I'm looking for tweets, and then it'll show me tweets. Fabulous! That's really helpful. Thanks for sort of walking us through just like that initial like how does how is the UI set up? Um, but I think yeah, I think what I'm hearing is. Just get clicking into one of the examples and, and see what happens. That's right. Cool. Well, then thank you so much. Um, we're wrapping up here. But before people go, I just want to, like, you know, one, thank you so much, Michael, for sharing your expertise on this. Um, and as I said, we'll share that video out. Um, but the other thing is, I would love to basically, yeah, do a quick promo because uh, this is not the only event we're doing. There is. There's more goodness coming. So uh, let me just dive right in there and say uh, we're busy. So we're going to be gathering again in a month's time to talk about the future of fundraising events. Um, and our friends at Trellis have actually done a survey of Canadian nonprofits to talk a little bit about the current status of events as we come through this COVID period around their fundraising work. And they're going to share the uh, best practices and the results of that surveys with us in June as we start uh, thinking about like, oh, what what could my fundraising events look like as we come into the fall? 
then maybe we'll take the summer off. Maybe someone will come to me with a good event idea. But otherwise, know for sure that we'll be back in September um, where we're going to actually go into some of this Google Analytics, Analytics goals that Michael was talking about. So the event will be the 25% of Google Analytics that you actually need to know about. There's a lot in there. Maybe it's not all the stuff you need to like worry about all the time. So we'll focus in on just the hot 25%. That event will be on September 14th. And again, if you go to events.techsoup.org, you can register for all those events now and get them into your calendar. Um, and otherwise, thank you so much, everyone, for showing up. Um, it was a delight to get to connect with you. And I hope to one day have in-person events with many of you again. At a minimum, we'll do that in 2021. We're going to see how the fall plays out. But uh, otherwise, thank you all. And uh, have a really lovely day.